Hi, I have here my DIY reflow oven I have just built using a cheap toaster oven from Amazon, actually two of them combine some parts and a control Leo 3 reflow oven controller, actually the whole kit from, from control Leo that includes all the insulation material and, and everything you basically need to, to build quite a decent DIY reflow oven. I've made another video about building the oven where you can find all the details. Let's just turn it now on. The great thing with this one is that you have the learning thing here so you can actually as a PID controller for the heating element so you can run a learning cycle um, so you don't need to guess some tuning parameters there. It also then shows you kind of um, a score for your oven, like how good is your your heating power and your insulation and so on. And then you have the, the reflow profiles and you also have bake, so you can bake some parts if you need. Um, so I have one profile in the SD card. So how these profiles are made, you have a kind of simple scripting language. Um, basically you get a template from the control website and you just modify the, the temperatures and times based on the profile you want to follow and then you may need some fine tuning later on. So the oven looks like, so there's a lot of this uh, reflecting tape, heat tape and insulation material inside, then I have a uh, two heating elements on the bottom and two on top and then there is this extra boost element on the bottom as well um, so the oven actually had only one element the bottom one top but i bought two of these ovens and combined the elements here is my test tray so i have just five small old boards i've just placed um, just two resistors in each, just I have something there and just put them on a different sides of the tray Just to see that they all solder There's a thermocouple there in the middle uh, the oven That's still a bit of like um, Reading the instructions. I kind of don't know where it acts exactly it should be They say that it should be just something like that that it doesn't matter that much um, I tried to run the learning cycle by placing the, the thermocouple in different locations and you do get different um, tuning parameters but um, yeah I guess it's still not that accurate or it's it's difficult to, to place it in an ideal location if you put it in the PCB yeah it, it is it requires more heat and so on but it's um, I don't know. Another thing is that you kind of don't want to knock any components with the, the thermocouple there, so it would just need to be somewhere there that's not too much on the way. Um, I don't know if I should try to put it somewhere a little bit close to the PCP. Uh, I will just leave it like that now. Okay, so I have things there, so I guess I'm just gonna hit run profile. Now it's just gonna preheat until 100 degrees before it actually starts the, the reflow program. Okay, now it hit 100 degrees, so now it actually started following the profile. Um, so the next is to get to 150 degrees in, in 90 seconds. Okay, so now it starts ramping up towards the 183 degrees, which is the, the melting point of the solder paste. So there's this kind of like a waiting times because there are moments when everything is just turned on like kind on of a full power before it starts controlling the loop. There is also like in the profile scripts there is um, values for maximum duty cycle. So I, for example, at the moment I have put it, it's not allowed to run everything at 100%. Okay, so now we're almost there. So when it gets to this, it just keeps it there just for a while and then it starts cooling down 240 okay now it starts cooling down so it opens the door
So now everything is off. It cools down quite fast. I could try to adjust that a little bit. They would open just the door a little bit first. There is a ceramic blanket inside the oven, so that actually the the top of the oven is not, it's just warm and same for the sides as well but the rear panel and the bottom would be very hot because that's just the same steel panel which is inside the oven there is a, a insulation in front of it but it's that's that would be burning hot so you still need to be careful where you put the oven okay i'm just gonna open it now to cool it so yeah now it's some fumes coming also from the solar of course um, so you need to this is now just a couple of resistors there but if you have a, a proper board you need do need to have it well ventilated space where you do it now the door's been open for a while it's still 55 degrees i've also opened the window because it is quite a lot of fumes coming even there was only only a little bit of solar so uh, it you do need to have a proper ventilated space when you when you have bigger ports being soldered so i have my leather cloth here so i'm, I'm not gonna take the boards out um yeah it looks that everything has been soldered so next time it's to act to try actual board to solder okay this time i have a real ports to solder they're not overly complicated but they do have a range of different type of components here i have used spare pcbs to keep the board in place when applying the solder paste using a stencil here's the solder paste applied I must say the result is quite good. Um, it's not overly fine pitch components, but still relatively small ones. So um, the paste is clearly on the pads and not spread around. I used an old credit card when applying the, the paste on a stencil. I recorded this with two cameras, one wide angle showing the oven, another one trying to show the, the soldering inside the oven. And now I'm just doing the voiceover, the videos and photos. Let's first fast forward to 100 degrees, which is the point where the actual program starts. Obviously nothing is happening inside the oven yet. Let's go fast forward close to the melting point of the solder page, which is uh, 183 degrees. Okay, now we're almost there. Hundred and eighty. Okay, now we start something. See something happening. Um, it's quite quickly when it starts melting. Then you can also see some of the components are kind of self-aligning themselves when it gets soft. The paste. I think that was pretty much it. There was still some something happening some bubbling but it's still increased from 183 until 235 quite a lot over the melting point you can still see the solar bubbling there somewhere Now it hit the peak, so the cooling starts, the door opens a little bit. I have tried to tweak the cooling down part of the profile by adjusting how quickly and how much the door gets open. Uh, it tends to be either it goes down too fast or too slowly, so I still need to tweak that, but I'm, I'm doing small adjustments between every, every run I do.
Here I also needed to open the door manually because it was cooling down so slowly. Because now we should start uh, seeing the solar getting solid again. It may not be visible, but at least not bubbling anymore. Now it's kind of that temperature that it should get solid again. So I think that's pretty much it then, just cooling it down further and take the ports out. Here is the result after reflowing and no complaints whatsoever. Everything looks neat, the components are nicely in place, no shorts, um, both ports work fine. And by the way, this board is an I2S to SP diff converter and it's available to purchase if you need one. I will add a link in the description. This was the second real port I soldered. Um, this is a very high performance ADC, which is also available. It's quite a bit more complicated board as it has a QFN package and some of the SO packages, they have a thermal pad beneath. I did have a little bit of issues with this one, so I need to fix something, but um, overall, yeah, it's, it's all fine. Just need to improve my solar paste applying. And that's all for now. Catch you next time.